One thing I learned over the past few years is that a good mount, one that is matched to the rest of the Astro setup, is very important in enhancing the viewing experience. While a heavy duty mount will almost always improve stability, it simply isn't always necessary and ends up adding unnecessarily to the bulk of the whole setup if the rest of the equipment is on the lighter side. Of course, this goes both ways. A heavy setup simply doesn't belong on a lightweight and flimsy mount. But especially for a setup below 5 or 6 kilograms, a compact and lightweight mount can definitely be sufficient. This not only keeps the price and the weight down, but will also make everything much more easy to transport around, which might encourage you to leave your balcony or backyard and go to a more remote place with better skies. This is why in today's video I'll be taking a deeper look at the SV225 mount head from Sviboni and also compare it to my favorite lightweight mount so far, the AZ Pronto from Skywatcher. So sit back, relax and let's get this video on the road. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to Video Observatory. As you already know, there are two types of mounts for telescopes, alt azimuth or AZ mounts and equatorial or EQ mounts, with both types coming in manual and computerized versions. Alt azimuth describes a type of mount where the telescope is configured around a vertical azimuth axis of rotation and a horizontal cross axis, the altitude or elevation axis. An EQ mount on the other hand is designed in such a way that it is able to compensate for Earth's inclination by having one additional axis, the polar axis, that is parallel to the Earth's axis of rotation. The SV225 that I have with me today is of an alt azimuth design and I've been using it for the past few weeks. During this time I've paired it with a lightweight aluminum tripod from Skywatcher and my 4-inch F7 reflector telescope. Now, full disclosure, Sviboni did send me this mount head for the purpose of this review. And while I really appreciate this, it won't color my opinion about it. So let's take a closer look at the SV225. It arrived tightly packed in this unassuming cardboard box. Inside there is some fair amount of bolstering for all the included pieces, which is very nice. Included are a user's manual, the manually operated alt azimuth mount head, accessories like friction brakes and some allen keys for adjustments, as well as two slow motion cables and a fixed handlebar for manual operation. Now, there is some assembly, or better said, some reconfiguration required before it is ready to use, but don't worry, it's nothing complicated. You only need to detach the base and rotate it 180 degrees before reattaching it again. This is simply done by unscrewing a single M8 bolt. The whole construction consists of three separate pieces of machined aluminum, a Vixen style dovetail plate, featuring one main and two separate securing screws for the dovetail bar on the OTA, a 27 long vertical support structure with sizable cutouts to save weight without compromising rigidity, and a cylinder shaped base element featuring a 3 8 of an inch by 16 threading for attaching the mount to the tripod. This standard is compatible with most OEM tripods from Celestron, Skywatcher, Orion and others. Other tripod types are also compatible, such as the ones for um, cameras and camcorders. All pieces are powder coated white, which creates a smooth and rather glossy look, which is fine, but if it were anodized aluminum instead, it would have been nicer and in the long run definitely more durable as well. Looking closer, both the joints for the horizontal and vertical movement feature a nice black metal ring with markings for the degrees of rotation. They also feature manually operated friction brakes to better control the movement on both axes. These are 
two smaller handle screws, each attached to one of the joints. Speaking of movement, the mount can be moved both freely by hand or by turning the slow motion cables. These are light and flexible and can also be attached on both sides of the joint to accommodate right and left handed use. Here I can report that in both cases the movement is very smooth and fluid. The way the friction brakes can be applied is nice and linear, which allows for very fine adjustments. This makes finding the exact balance sweet spot where the OTA can be moved almost effortlessly with just one finger very easy. There is, however, a bit of play when trying to move the OTA on the elevation axis with the friction brake firmly in place. This behavior isn't present on the azimuth axis and is most likely caused by the distance between the teeth of the different gear types inside the joint. There is also the possibility to move the mount by using the supplied fixed handle just like you would move a camera on a tripod. But depending on the OTA this might not be an option after all. In my case the focuser assembly of the OTA gets enough in the way that using this handle doesn't make any sense. The whole mount head weighs 2.5 kilograms which is on the heavier side, but it needs this weight and the stability to be able to support the rated payload capacity of 10 kilograms. It also features a 360 degrees freedom of rotation on the azimuth axis and according to Sfiboni a minus 60 to plus 60 degrees rotation range on the elevation axis. But this as well is dependent on the OTA and its dimensions. For example with the 4 inch F7 refractor I was able to tilt the OTA to around 70 degrees of elevation until it connected with the base of the mount. Not being able to go past 60 or 70 degrees of elevation means that no zenith or near zenith observations are possible with this mount. Depending on what type of observations you want to do, this might end up being a major downside worth keeping in mind. Alright, so the SV225 seems to be a good AZ mount head, but how does it compare to other alternatives on the market today? Like for example the AZ Pronto from Skywatcher. The AZ Pronto has been my workhorse for the past few years and despite the fact that it's a lightweight mount head rated only for a maximum payload capacity of 3 kilograms or so, it never had any problem supporting setups of up to 6 kilograms, including my current 4 inch refractor setup for visual and astrophotography applications. The first thing that was obvious to me as I unpacked the SV225 for the first time was that it's considerably bigger and heavier than the AZ Pronto, 2.5 versus 1.1 kilograms. Both models feature a vixen style dovetail plate for attaching the OTA. While these are perfectly fine, I can't help but feel that both companies missed out on a great opportunity here. Both models are relying on one or multiple screws to secure the dovetail bar onto the plate. While this method is definitely secure, it will damage the dovetail bar on the OTA in time as the whole force is concentrated onto a single point, the tip of the screw, rather than being distributed across a larger area. There are other options out there that use one or more counter plates to press on the dovetail bar. This not only increases the contact surface, but it's also arguably more secure. It would have been nice if the SV225 had this feature as well. Looking at build quality, both mounts look and feel very solid. All aluminum build, smooth movement on both axes, nice friction brakes, but overall I would have to say that the SV225 takes the first spot. It just feels more solid with smooth movement on both axes, especially when moving it freely by hand. 
I also like the friction brakes on the SV225 more because they can better adjust the applied force on the joint, allowing you to find the exact sweet spot where the whole setup is balanced out more easily. Ergonomically speaking, both mounts employ different designs for attaching the OTA, while the AZ Pronto features a more traditional approach where the OTA is attached on the top of the mount. The SV225 features a dovetail plate that's rotated 90 degrees on the Z-axis, so it's positioned vertically instead of horizontally like the AZ Pronto. And this makes attaching the OTA a bit of a challenge since you won't be able to pick it up by the handle anymore. Instead, you need to carefully slide the OTA in while supporting its weight and applying a counter force to the mount so it doesn't tip over. And this task becomes much more difficult if you are doing this outside when it's dark and cold. Then there is the fact that the SV225 will only allow for a maximum of 70-ish degrees of elevation, while the AZ Pronto can go almost all the way up to 90 degrees, making it the more versatile option of the two. Another thing to keep in mind is that because of the way the OTA attaches to the dovetail plate on the SV225, Having a telescope with a freely rotating focuser assembly will make your life a bit easier. Otherwise, you will need to loosen up the ring clamp securing the OTA and rotate the whole telescope 90 degrees just to have the focuser and finder scope pointing the right way up. But the design of the SV225 also has some advantages, such as the elevated position of the OTA when attached to the mount. The vertical arm raises the position of the telescope considerably to a total of 27.5 cm above the tripod, and this has one key advantage over the AZ Pronto, where the telescope sits much lower at only 11 cm above the tripod. The advantage being that the tripod legs don't need to be extended that much to reach a comfortable observing position, which in turn places the center of gravity a bit lower, making the whole setup a bit more stable and less susceptible to vibrations during observations. This combined with the overall more solid construction makes the SV225 the more stable mount head out of the two. So there you have it. The SV225 is a good manually operated AZ mount head, one that is rock solid and very well put together. Aside from a little play in the azimuth joint, the movements are precise and very smooth, making it a joy to use and easy to balance out. It does, however, have some downsides as well, but the biggest ones are inherited by the type of its design and have little to do with how well it is put together or the quality of materials used. The C-shaped arm design simply allows for a more restricted range of motion on the elevation axis compared to other types while the same design is also responsible for a somewhat cumbersome process of attaching the OTA to the mount. But with all this being said, if this type of mount head fits well with the rest of your setup and your observation habits, then the SV225 is definitely worth checking out. All right. So these were my thoughts on the SV225 and now I'm curious to find out what you guys think of it. Also let me know what type of telescope mount you are using during your observing sessions. I'm looking forward to reading your comments down below. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next one.